G'day, welcome to Todd's Kitchen. Who doesn't love dinner rolls with, well, dinner? But they also go well with other things as well. But if your oven's taken up with space and you want some fresh dinner rolls, this is the video that you need. So join me today as I make my version of dinner rolls in a slow cooker. Okay, so we're going to start this off with the obvious and that's a mixing bowl. So into the mixing bowl, I'm going to place in one cup of warm milk. And I can let it warm up to room temperature or just stick it in the microwave for say 30 seconds. And to that I'm going to add one packet or two and a quarter teaspoons of instant yeast. And this is what helps make our dough rise up until we get to that nice fluffy consistency. Okay, so we're just going to leave it as is for five minutes just to give a chance for that yeast to activate. Okay, so our yeast has completely soaked up all the milk and activated. So it doesn't get much simpler than this. So first of all, I'm going to add in three cups of regular plain flour. No special flour, just plain flour will do. Then two tablespoons of sugar, followed by two tablespoons of honey. Then two tablespoons of melted butter. And of course, about two tablespoons of salt. Now there are a couple of ways to do this. You can do this by hand. It takes about the same amount of time, so you can give it a good mix and then we're going to knead it. Basically kneading it is folding it over itself continuously until we get to a nice elastic consistency. Or you can take the easy way out, which preferably I always do because I'm not lazy, but it's just so much easier. I like to use, use a dough hook on my stand mixer. So we're going to knead this away for about five to six minutes, just until everything is nicely mixed through and we get to a nice dough ball. And the trick to this is, if you find that it's too wet, simply add a little bit more flour, but if it's too dry, just add a little bit more milk. But make sure it's completely mixed through before you get to that stage. Because it does take a little bit, but it will all come together nicely. So I've had this mixed away for about a minute or so, and as you can tell, it's actually pretty dry. So I'm just going to add the tiniest amount of milk and I'm going to let that mix through completely and that should be just enough to bring it up to a nice dough ball consistency. And as you can see just a little bit of milk has made a huge difference. See how it's all forming into one nice ball? That is perfect. So that's exactly how we want it. So I'm just going to turn it down a little bit now that it's mixed through. And this is just going to knead away for, a, give it a good six minutes. Six minutes to be on the safe side. And that'll make sure everything is completely mixed through and combined. And we'll get to that nice elastic dough consistency. Okay, so it's been about seven minutes now. So as you can see, it's one big dough ball and it's nice and elastic. So that's more than enough. So we're just going to take it out. Okay, so I've just got a chopping board here. Now before we start doing anything, we just want to just lightly spread just a little bit of flour on top. Just prevents it from sticking. And we just want to roll it into a ball like so. Just so it's relatively, you know, ball-like. <laughs> and as a hint, this is kneading. So you push it forward, fold it over itself, forward, over, over and over again. That's that's basically what the kneading machine does the, with the dough hook. So anyway, we've got it into a uniform shape like so. So I'm just gonna push it down a little bit and we're just going to cut it into equal portions. And just simply roll each one into a nice round ball and just like so so we're just going to continue on with the rest of them until they're all the same okay so it doesn't get much simpler than this i've just got my slow cooker here now this is a slow cooker pressure cooker it's an all-in-one thing but it makes no difference any slow cooker will do so in the base i'm just going to line it with some parchment paper or non-stick baking paper and simply place in our dough balls just next to each other inside of our slow cooker. Now if you have a much larger slow cooker, do twice the amount, it makes no difference, it's up to you. 
but for what I've made, it fits perfectly. Okay, so we're just going to place our lid on. Now, if you just happen to have one of those pressure cookers that are also a slow cooker, we're just going to keep it on the bake section because we don't want to seal this like a pressure cooker. It's just a slow cooker. So any slow cook will do. Okay, so for the slow cooker setting, we're going to use the high temperature and we're just going to change that time to 90 minutes. Now, unfortunately, the minimum my goes down to is two hours, but that's okay. I'll set an extra timer on the side for 90 minutes, so, which is exactly an hour and a half. So I can just come back with this 30 minutes left. And once 30 minutes is left, I'm just going to simply take off the lid and it's done. But of course, if you have a timer on the side, just set that for 90 minutes. It is that simple. Okay, so it's just been over 90 minutes. Yeah, a couple of minutes either way, doesn't really matter. So we're just going to stop this and simply take off the lid. And there we have our dinner rolls. Yep, nice and firm. They're fantastic. Okay, so we take our dinner rolls out of our slow cooker. And I'm just going to place them onto a baking tray. Now they are completely cooked, just as they should be. But a lot of people like them with a little brown on top. So it's very simple to get that effect. I've got some melted butter. So we're just going to lightly brush each one of our rolls just with some melted butter. And we're just going to stick them into the boiler or griller. It depends what country you're from. They're basically called the same thing. It's basically where you're just going to cook just the top of it on a high temperature. Okay, so once they're in. Okay, so we're just going to cook these in the broiler or griller for about two minutes on high, just until they're nice and brown on top. Okay, so it's been a couple of minutes and they smell absolutely delicious. There's nothing better than the smell of fresh baked bread, especially dinner rolls. Now, don't they look absolutely delicious? They just pull apart like, well, like dinner rolls. You can see the steam just starting to come off. They're still pretty warm. And they're nice and fresh and they're perfect this way for dinner. Because when you open one up, you put some butter on. I love how the butter just melts directly into the roll. Just like this. Now just look at how it's starting to melt straight in. I love dinner rolls like this. Nice and warm where the butter just melts right in. So they're a perfect addition to any dinner recipe no matter what. So you can use normal butter or you can mix it up and use some garlic infused butter. But no matter what they're incredibly simple to make. Literally takes almost no work whatsoever to make your own. And there is nothing better than homemade fresh bread rolls. So whether you use normal butter, garlic butter, whether you have them hot or cold, either way, these homemade dinner rolls are going to taste simply delish. Mm -hmm.